worship Fox instead of you. Yes, the first commandment. It's a big deal, though, isn't it? It's a big deal. Think of how, I don't know a better way of putting it, it's just messed up. It is to be the creator of the world and have people prefer to worship a rock that's an inanimate, worthless object that would worship you at your command if you wanted it to. That is ridiculous. Yes, sir. Well, it seems stupid, but the Bible also says that. Um, I, I'm not exactly. Like Romans sure, 1. That. Well, it also says that behind those objects were sat satanic power. So it wasn't just a rock, it was a power behind that that they were worshiping as far as. Um, to try to obtain. We, we recognize that. These inanimate objects, you know, if somebody worships the sun, or they worship the moon, or they worship whatever, they're worship, or or they worship the sh the sea, or they worship whatever. They're what they're they usually had to do something with their culture and what they depended on, mm -hmm. and so they would worship the god of that thing. But all of those so-called quote-unquote gods were gods of one thing, and God Almighty is God of everything. And so they are a, if they were legitimate, and they're not, if they were legitimate, they are just one little thing kind of God. I'm going to tell you something, I can see why you'd be a pagan and he's all, need all kinds of gods. Because sometimes it'd be good to have a God of the harvest, and sometimes it'd be good to have a God of the sea, and sometimes it'd be good to have a God of the weather, and sometimes it'd be good to have a God of love, and sometimes it'd be good to have, you know, the God that is a hateful God and needs to be appeased. All these things, but the, the, the funny thing about it is, is that God is more than all of those. He's God, and He's everything. He's a person, and He's, he's everything. And so it's worshiping something that you feel like you have a need of. God, I want to surrender to you. And that's what Romans chapter 1 says. You're, you know, your, your purpose is you want to worship and serve the creature more than the Creator. You've lifted yourself up in your wisdom and you would rather worship something inferior to yourself so that you can feel like you're just as smart as God or smarter. In other words, man always worships things that are at his level or below mm -hmm. instead of worshiping God who created man and his intellect. So the very intellectual limitations that we have were created by God which says he's way, way bigger. Way, way smarter. Well, the last one of the last things we looked at last week was the charge that God made against Israel. That's what we really want to focus on this week. We touched on it last week. I want to focus on it that this week. And that is that one of their major sins was that they preferred man's wisdom and man's ways to the truth. They preferred man's wisdom to the truth. I don't know about you, but I can relate to that. How many times have we personally said, I don't want to hear it? Not really considering that we were talking about truth. Many times we do not want to hear it. And it's interesting that what we don't want to hear isn't a lie. What we don't want to hear is God's way. Now we've got good motivation for that. Listen, friend, you've got a good motivation not to want God to tell you something true about yourself. So when God tells us the truth, it usually has application. Truth is, it really doesn't matter if it doesn't apply to us. And if something's true from the Word of God, what does it mean? It means that if it is different than what I think or want to think, I've got to change or I'm wrong. And so it naturally follows that we don't want to be wrong and so we don't want to deal with it and we say, I don't want to hear it. We're talking about truth. Christian, the attitude of somebody who is concerned about the things of God is, I want to delve into the little things and know what God says. Because it's important that I agree with God. And if I find that God's Word says something different than what I think, it naturally follows. It is a natural assumption of mine that I'm going to change what I think. And I'm going to believe what God says. 
You know, that is a growing process in a Christian's life. You know you're growing when you don't care so much about what you've always done or what's easiest, and you're more concerned about whether or not God will be pleased by it. You give me a Christian that is concerned about whether or not God is pleased. And I'll tell you something, they will soon outgrow the person who knows all the answers. And their life will please God a lot more and they'll be profitable. God is not looking for intellectual genius Christians that have mastered knowledge. doesn't need them. He's mastered knowledge. He's got that taken care of. What God wants is people that will live for Him. And anybody can live for God if they just seek to know truth. It's just very simple. The Christian life is very simple. And the charge God has laid against Israel and against Judah is that if a man, and speaking, man walking in the Spirit, and it is small s, the man walking in man's spirit. Man with man's ability. Prophets are, and, and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink. He shall even be the prophet of this people. In other words, the prophet, if all the prophet has to do to come to you guys and be lifted up and be exalted and be made somebody as a prophet, be your prophet is, all he has to do is say, hey, wine and small drink. Or strong wine and small drink. Wine and strong drink. What does that mean? It means, hey, prosperity, guys, prosperity, prosperity. Do you know the prosperity guys are pretty popular, particularly in prosperous times? It's true. It amazes me, absolutely astounds me. When I turn on the uh, television, I haven't done it in a while. My wife, for the most part, forbids it. But uh, uh, not the... Anyway. Um, the, uh, I turn on the television to the Christian channel, quote-unquote, and watch those prosperity guys uh, working their charlatans, what do they call it, uh, their uh, charlatries, whatever, you know what I'm talking about, they're charlatans, it means they're fakes. And they're saying the most blasphemous, famous, blasphemous, man, I'm having trouble, boy, I'm really going to need cliche guy, I'm going to have to have you stand up here, blasphemous things about the character of God. Oh, no Christian who loves the Lord and is giving us His money is going to be sick. That's one of their lies, isn't it? Listen, uh, if, if uh, you love the Lord and you give us your money, God will heal you. That's a lie, isn't it? If you love the Lord and you give us your money, God will make you rich. That's prosperity gospel. In other words, it's what these false prophets are saying. Hey, support us and we'll tell you you're okay. That's popular. As ridiculous as that is, folks, I want to tell you something. You would not want a doctor that told you what you wanted to hear instead of the truth. But Israel wanted a preacher that would tell them what they wanted to hear instead of the truth. Why do we want truth? So we can be well. Right? If it's a lie, we can believe it all we want to, but it won't work. All kinds of Christians are living lives that are a lie. And the problem is it doesn't work. And they can just be as happy as they want to with the message that they're receiving, which works well with their fancies and works well with their desires and whatever else. But folks, what works is the truth. You know the secret of happiness? Truth. You know the secret to real prosperity the Bible way? Truth. You know the secret to the fulfilled Christian life? Truth. Because truth exposes error. What is the source of error that's being exposed? Where's it at? Where's the problem? 